Glory to God. Hallelujah. Was that powerful or what? Amen, amen. Ah, the women now flood the men from last week. Oh. <laughs> last week was the men's turn, but we're too serious. But the women have a way of bringing style and finesse into everything. Praise God. Have you been enjoying this series so far? All right. Let's take our seats. So, um, we started this series this month, Pink and Blue, and um, the concept and context behind the teaching is to show the differences between men and women. As a matter of fact, you know, you need to understand why differences, in fact, <laughs> another word for when people quarrel is called what? Differences. So we need to settle our differences. It is the, usually the differences that cause problems in marriages. It's the differences. In fact, abroad, I don't know if they use it here, but abroad, the number one reason, highest reason for divorce is called irreconcilable differences. <laughs> That's what they call it. Number one reason for divorce, highest reason for divorce, is irreconcilable what? Differences. So it's because men and women are different, and if they don't understand the differences, you will keep misinterpreting the words and actions of your partner. You will keep misinterpreting it. And you will think this person hates you. Not knowing that this person is seeing life from a totally different perspective than you. So we're not just doing this series to catch fun or to catch crews. No, the purpose of this series is to help bridge that gap, that difference gap. Scientifically, there are over 6,000 genetic differences between a man and a woman, See, over 6,000. I'm sure it will be way, way more than that. So we are so different. There's nothing about a man and a woman that is the same. And not having that understanding can lead to serious issues. Not having that understanding can lead to serious issues. So on the first day, we talked about love and respect. We said number one need for a woman is to be loved. And number one need for a man is to be respected. And somebody thinks, oh, it's culture. We're talking about African culture. It's not African culture. It's global scripture. <laughs> All right? Ephesians 5, 33 makes it clear. NIV translation. It said, you men see to it that you love your wives as your own self. And you wives see to it that you respect your husband. So we didn't get it from culture. We actually got it from scripture. It was God that told us that you as a man... Every time you want your wife to respond favorably, show her love. Love is not just something you are feeling. Love is the action. It's the things you do. Meeting her need. Put her first. Then they say, you, the wife, every time you want to motivate your husband, do it with respect. Because men do everything for respect, for honor. Praise God. Then the next week, we established that women are relational or relationship-minded. Uh, men are work-oriented. Women are relationship-oriented. Men are work-oriented. Okay? This is important. So today, I've been talking about, I'm going to continue from where I stopped in the first service. I will encourage you to get the message of the first service because I'm going on from there. I'm talking about conversations. Women talk for affection. Men talk for information. Write that down if you're writing it to help you. Women talk for affection. Men talk for information. This is why there's always a communication gap between a man and a woman. Always a communication gap. Men talk for information. Women talk for affection. What does this mean? A woman is not necessarily talking to you or wanting to talk to you on the phone because she has one very important information. No. She wants to talk to you because you matter to her. If you are the person that matters to her, one of the first things she wants to do with you is talk. Women talk for affection. When they like you, they talk to you. That's what happens. If a woman likes you, she wants to talk to you. That is why most women consider it a crime for you as a husband or boyfriend not to keep in touch for days. 
a crime punishable by law. You can't say you are in a relationship with someone or you are married to someone and you are not keeping the communication lines open. You must be talking. Now, the challenge from the men's side, a man is saying, but I have nothing to say. I'll just wake up and just call you for no reason. Yes. Because men talk for information. Men don't talk to each other except there's something to say. So two men can be very close friends and they've not spoken for two years. And they'll just call the other person after two years and say, guy, you get your number. He say, I'll go send them to you, I'll get them. And that's it, nobody's angry. They'll talk as if everything is fine. Because they know that whenever you see your friend's call, there is an information either he wants to give you or get from you. We're not angry. So many men carry that same attitude into their relationship and marriage, thinking, okay, I dropped my wife at work, I went to work, do I need to call her again in the afternoon to check up on her? She may have dropped her. You're calling her again during the day. It's not because you have information. It's because you have affection. Women talk for affection. Very important. They like to keep in touch with who they like. So when I first started dating my wife, um, when we were both single, if I see her on Monday, I won't call her. If we're applying to see next Monday, if I see her this Monday, I'm planning to see next Monday, I won't call her. I'll talk to her throughout the week till next Monday. We'll chat a few times, but... Then there was really no chat, it was SMS. Very expensive. <laughs> because they charge you for every text. Not like today, people can just send a message in WhatsApp. Okay, okay, finish. That's very unwise in those days. You're not economical. <laughs> you say everything you need to say inside that. You try to use your, and they, they give you the words so you calculate. That's why we started learning how to abbreviate words. It's SMS, you abbreviate. <laughs> Because you must communicate. So, so I, I won't call her for the whole week. So she started telling me that, no, you, you, you can't call me on Monday and wait till next week. You have to call me during the week. I said, hey. Yeah. She said, yes. I said, okay, no problem. So Monday, Tuesday, or there about, or Wednesday, I'll pick the phone and just call. Say, hello, yeah. Say, well, <laughs> you said I should be calling you. <laughs> so I just say, my, I hail you. She said, you can't hail me. I'm not one of your guys. You can't be hailing me. You see, so I have to understand that women need that communication. They talk for affection, not for information. Men, on the other hand, only see communication as something to pass important information. Men have fewer words. We were not actually created so much to communicate like women. Adam was alone in the garden for many years. So he's used to internalizing. He wasn't used to expressing. So men think a lot of thoughts, they just internalize it. Women, on the other hand, they think and talk at the same time. In fact, talking helps them process things. For men, keeping quiet and thinking is what helps them process things. Do you see? So ordinarily, without teachings like this, if two man and woman marry, they will have problems. Because the woman will be like, you are not talking to me now. And the man is saying, I'm thinking. I can't be talking and thinking. I want to go and think. And the woman is wondering, why do you need to go and hide to think? As we are talking, are you not thinking? <laughs> Our engines are not the same. Men don't think and talk at the same time. If we are thinking, we are quiet. And we internalize a lot. If we are thinking, we are quiet. And women can be restless when they just see you quiet. Thinking. They say, what's wrong? The man is saying, nothing. So what are you thinking about? Now I'm thinking about which of the things I'm thinking about that I can tell you I'm thinking about. Because, <laughs> because right now, this question has confused my thinking. Men hate that question. When women say, what are you thinking about? Ah. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> ah. Because we are always thinking and our thought process is slower. When you interrupt us, if a man is thinking from here to there, that's he wants to think, start from here and finish there in processing something. If he's going like this and you stop him, say, what are you thinking about? Ah, you have brought him back here. <laughs> he's going to start here. But women don't understand because women, as women are talking, they're thinking, they're talking, they're thinking, they're talking, they're thinking. In fact, talking helps them move faster. They're talking, they're thinking, <laughs> Men think slower but deeper. Women think quicker and easier. They think very fast on their toes. Are you here, somebody? So you need to understand that when a man is quiet most times, 
he's trying to process things. And if he asks him what he's thinking and he says nothing, he's okay. Women don't understand that. Because women's minds are never thinking nothing. That's why they find it hard to believe. A lot of times, the way men relax is by offing the generator inside. Men off the physical and mental generator and just be looking, staring blank. Not thinking of anything serious. This is also scientifically proven. They put, I, told you, I think I mentioned it last week. They put the men, put them in a the room, they sat down. They, they were reading their mental activity on a machine. They were just on the same level, not worrying. They noticed that the one of women, the way their mind was up and down when they were doing an activity, when they get, got them to sit down, their brain activity increased. Because she's worrying about all the things she could be doing instead of sitting down here in this stupid experiment. So that's why women can wake up more tired than when they went to sleep. Because as they were sleeping, their mind was still running up and down. The market say, I didn't buy Ugu, I didn't buy Ugu, I didn't buy Ugu. Yeah, how much is Ugu, how much is Ugu, how much is Ugu? And Ugu is scarce, Ugu is scarce, Ugu is scarce. I don't know if my bimbo has Ugu, 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 Ugu. Do I need dry fish, dry fish? Dry... She's sleeping, no, she's sleeping. So she wake up and say, I'm tired. Of course you are tired. <laughs> you went to the market. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that's why women find it hard to understand when we say we are not doing anything. The, the men sat down, they read their mind activity blank. Men were really blank as they sit down. Women don't get rest as they sit down. <laughs> so you need to understand that men internalize. Men sometimes think about nothing. If you say, what I think about, he says nothing. Nothing is nothing. It's okay. That women find it hard to believe. Because for them, when women say, what I, when you ask a woman what I think about, she says nothing. There are many things. And she's expecting you to really, really ask her. So she's surprised when she told you nothing and you two left. She said, what's in this one? Come and hear what I'm thinking, Joe. I said, nothing, you are going. <laughs> Those in the first service will understand because I explained that. Women speak poetry, you must understand. Women don't speak literally. So, again, another thing you need to understand about how women and men communicate. Men always talk for solution also. So a man will not share a problem with you except he sees you as somebody that can likely solve the problem or you can connect into. So men don't just share their problem. You know, unlike women. Women just go about and share their problem. Women doesn't have to know you. Just say, hey, how are you? See your baby? Ke, 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 ke. My own self was sick when you, you just are sharing. <laughs> you don't know this woman, no? Women can meet somewhere and be like, hey, what did they buy? Ugu's? Ah, my husband know they eat Ugu's. Ah, my own husband in problem, pass your own. You know, they, they will start sharing family problem. They don't know themselves, oh. Because women feel better when they share. When a woman is sharing her problem, she's not sharing it for solution. She's sharing for affection. Remember, women talk for affection. She's sharing to connect, sharing to vent. She's not necessarily looking for solution. As a counselor, one of the things I hate to do is to advise women. They don't really advise women. They will tell you their problem. They will also tell you the solution. They know the solution. <laughs> you know, it's just to listen and say, mm, yeah, really? Oh, mm. You don't even have to listen throughout. Just be coming in different junction and hear the last thing and ask questions about that last one, then go again in your mind. She'll be okay. She will talk herself into the solution. Women don't need your solution. They just need your empathy. They need you to, to feel them when they are talking. So men make that mistake. When your wife is venting and talking, let her talk. Talk to her. Ask her questions. Say, why do you feel like that? Oh, wow, how did that happen? Eh, mm, really? Hey, ooh, hey. Do a lot of those things. Do it like you mean it, oh. <laughs> don't cut her off. <laughs> I tell men, when a woman is talking, there are four Ds you must not do. Don't debate, don't defend, don't dismiss, don't disagree. <laughs> Those are the four Ds of communicating with a woman. Don't defend. Don't defend. It's a waste of time. If you are defending, women communicate for feelings. They don't communicate for facts. They are not in a debate with you. They are just saying how they feel. So you can't challenge how somebody feels. Do you understand? I feel angry. What, no matter what you're going to say, it won't change my anger. I am angry. In fact, the fact that you're trying to get me out of my anger is making me more angry. So don't defend. Don't debate. Don't dismiss her. Say, what do you mean? No. Don't dismiss, then don't disagree. Just say, mm. oh, man. Ah, really? I understand. It's true. You will end the thing faster that way. <laughs> than defending yourself. Are you here, somebody? 
Women talk to vent. Men talk only for solution. A man will not call on that man except he sees that man as a potential solver of that problem. So this is why women complain that their husbands don't tell them issues. Because if that issue is something he doesn't see you as the kind of person that you can solve it, he will not bother you with it. So you see a man going through a big challenge for months or years, he wouldn't have told his wife. The day his wife will be like, what? You were going through all this and you didn't tell me? He will be like, but not that I've told you. What will, can you do? Do you have 10 million to give me? My, this woman, leave me, Joe. Because men only talk when they believe you can solve the problem. So men, what you need to learn is that women need you to share what you are going through, even if you don't think they can solve the problem, because the problem shared is also half solved. Why? Because women might not look like they have the solution, but usually they have capacity more than you know. You might think, what can my wife do? Trust me, if a woman loves you, if she feels connected with you, there's no problem you will share with her. She won't start racking her brain. Start racking her brain. And men make that mistake. You underestimate your wife. You underestimate her. Say, so what does she know? What can she do? <laughs> Trust me, women have shaking kingdoms that even a whole army couldn't shake. Trust me. She knows people. She has connections. And even if she can't do anything physically, she can pray. She can pray. She can pray. It helps. She will be more understanding even when you are quiet. She will be more understanding when you can't bring money for other things. It's important you share. Most men don't share. We internalize all our challenges. We internalize our fears. Because in the world of men, you don't share your fears. Men are not supposed to be afraid. Men are not supposed to cry. So we don't share weakness. Because in the world of men, sharing my problem is also meaning to say I am weak. So we don't want to say it. We only want to share our testimonies and our victories. We don't want to share problems because it's a, in, the, in the kingdom of men, it's a sign of weakness. Meanwhile, for women, sharing your problem is a sign of strength. So, oh, this is what you're going through. Hug me. Oh, I feel you. I can't believe you are going through. They like it. They gather around their problems and discuss it. And by the time they discuss it, they will all cry, hug each other, and they will all feel better. In the world of men, by sharing my problem with you, I'm putting the responsibility on you to help me solve it. So men don't even like to hear other men's problem. Because it means, this one will tell me now. <laughs> Hope say, you know the things. Eh? I go give you, borrow you money. <laughs> That's how we see it. We see sharing as sharing responsibility. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So women talk for affection, not for solution or information. Men, on the other hand, talk only for important information and for solution. So what's the wisdom point in this? Understand the other person. So as a man, even when you're not in the mood to talk, and your wife is in the mood to talk, give her the attention and talk with her. You might be so tired, you don't even have to, the thing about women is that you don't have, you don't have to be all present all the time. She will do the talking. She will do the talking. So just engage. Simple yes, no. Mm, why? Tell me more. Who is that? I don't know that person. That's all. If she just, those little questions are okay. She will do the rest. She will do the rest. So sometimes, you see, you are literally killing your wife if you don't let her talk to you. Most times when a woman gets married, she like almost forgets all her friends and wants to focus all her emotional energy on you. And most times that man is not emotionally available. So men only want to have conversations that are practical with their wife. Have we paid school fees? Do we need to buy a new washing machine? How much is it? Where, where did you check? LG or this? Can we check? That, those conversations are good, but that's not the kind of conversation a woman wants to have with her husband. So this is why I said last week, you must go on date nights. There are basic principles for date nights, guys. And for the men, you, that's your assignment for this month. And for the next two or three weeks, make sure you go on one date night. The principle of date night is that you must dress up. Don't just carry your short neck and slippers. <laughs> when I mean dress up, it doesn't have to be tuxedo. But wear a nice shirt. Wear a nice shirt. Let it look like you're going somewhere important. Because that's women rate. Women score everything one, one point. For men, oh, I don't have time to go into that in this service. Men are project-driven. Women are process-driven. So women, men score you only at the end of the project. Women score you from, you know those teachers in school that show you're working. They will score you points for how you even, are. but for men, it's the answer. Did you get the answer or did you not get the answer? If you like, design your working. The answer. So you must understand that. So for a man, a woman is scoring you from the fact that you, you said, let's go on a date. One mark. The fact that you knew where you wanted to take her 
Not, where should we go? I don't know. Where do we go? You don't know. I don't know too. Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's zero, zero, zero. You say, oh, honey, I want to take you to this nice restaurant. I checked it out, and I know you will like it. Look, even if you don't know, you will like it. Even if you don't know, she will like it. The fact that you said that you, you have thought of what she will like, one point. They will give you a point for that, for thinking. Take point. Then you dress up for the date. One point. You are trying. Then you wait for her to dress up and make up for the date without complaining. <laughs> One point. This is how to score points. Huh? Then you go on the date. The principle of the date is that you let her eat whatever she wants, either from the menu or from your plate. You score one point. Then throughout the date, you must not touch your phone. <laughs> Those are principles for date night. You must not touch your phone. That throughout the date night, you are going to give her undivided attention. One point. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? So, things like that matter. Women score those small, small, small points. This is why many women are frustrated because for a woman, the whole marriage thing is a big competition who we outlove each other. When she is doing something special for you, she is cooking your best food. One point. She knows your best food. One point. She arranged the napkin to match the cutlery and tablecloth. One point. She used fine cutlery. See, she's calling herself. She arranged the house, cleaned the house. So by the time the end of the day, she has caught 33 points. If you come, you don't even greet her. I just say, oh, where's my food? 33 to zero. <laughs> She'll be very upset. <laughs> She'll be very upset. That who this kind of guy did I marry? And her stress level will go up. And I told the guys in the first service, when a woman's stress level goes up, she goes to her box. She has a box. Every woman has a box because their memory is bigger than that of men. Every woman has a box. That box, all the things that have happened in her past that were not good, whether it was caused by you or by somebody else, they are all in that box. They have that big memory. Men don't have it. Women have it. Once she's upset or stressed, she goes to that box. Once she opens that box, everything is there. The things you did in 1982, she will remind you. It's not that she's trying to be wicked. It's just what she does when she's stressed. So your job as a man is to make sure she's not stressed. I told them in the first service, I have um, this big bank executive that we, we mentor and counsel. <laughs> He's a big guy in a bank. And um, I just sent him a chart out of the blues. Because I know those busy guys can, be, can forget. I just sent him a chart out of the blues that... When last did you go on date night with your wife? Because we mentored them in a relationship. And he said, ah, it has been like two months. So I said, that's too long. Don't do it. Ah, he didn't take it seriously. He said, you just know we are being, you know, this one, this one. You know, we're just giving excuses. I said, me, I've told you. I know how this things work. Two, one week or so after, he called me that, ah, the whole house is on fire. That they're having serious quarrel. I said, that's why I was trying to hint you. For a woman, you, it's better not to let her emotional tank go down. Don't wait for the fuel to be on reserve for it's running up and down. Be topping it up every day. That's what I was trying to tell him. And it was like, ah, all the things I did that she has even said she has forgiven me. She brought it up. I said, that's how it works. They have a box. The kids never let her go to that box. And you do it by keep feeling her emotional tongue. Once she gets to that box, it's like Squid Games. If she gets to that box, you are finished. They are going to shoot you. <laughs> so I spoke to him now a few days ago again. I said, How far now? He said, Everything is fine. I've been feeling her emotional tank. I said, Correct. You get the idea. Now, don't wait for crisis. Just be feeling the tank. It's like when you're driving a car, you don't wait for it to get reserved for you. To, you just, as you're passing for the station, look as you're looking at, Ah, I've used the car for some days. So you just go and top it up. Are you here, somebody? That's how it works. So women talk to vent. Men talk for information. 
So you as a woman, once in a while, be okay with your husband just talking for information, understanding. Be okay that he will take time to tell you about problems he has because sometimes he doesn't see you as a solution. So reassure him from time to time that you have capabilities he doesn't know about. Every time you as a woman that you solve a hard problem, share it with your husband as a testimony. He will start knowing that, ah, this girl sharp, oh, this girl strong. Oh. He has problem he can't tell you because he doesn't think he can solve it. You need to show him that he can solve it. Men only talk to people they feel can solve the problem. Men don't go about sharing their problem. We're not like that. It's a sign of weakness amongst men. Are you here, somebody? So, talk for affection. Then men, in closing, because the whole idea is for you to understand how your woman communicates. In closing, when you communicate, be endearing to your wife. So, when I, when I call, started calling my wife, then I, say, I say, make her hail you. She said, no, you can't say that. That's not what you do. So, I began to learn that when I call, you say things like, I miss you. How are you, darling? How are you, baby? I just wanted to hear your voice. It has to be endearing. Now, listen, men. When you start this thing, it won't make any sense to you. But the more you do it, you will get used to it, and you will start seeing the impact of it on your spouse. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Because the reason why men don't do it is that, what's there? I love you. What are you going to do? Women need their emotional thankful. So when you make those calls, be endearing. You can go to work with her in the morning. In the afternoon, just send a chat, a text, that, hey, I miss you. I was just thinking of you. I'm just checking up on you. Is somebody getting what I'm saying? Women communicate for affection. Keep that communication line going. Notice by yourself when she needs to vent. Sometimes a woman needs to talk. She doesn't want to tell you she needs to talk. She needs you to decode that she needs to talk. So sometimes just go and sit down with her. If she's in the kitchen, if she's in the bathroom, if she's somewhere, just go and sit down with her and give her attention. It makes her feel better when she vents. Hallelujah. All right? So very, very important. That, and another thing, please, men, this is why the worst thing you can do to your spouse is to keep malice. Don't do malice with a woman at all. Women, on the other hand, always do play fights. You know play fights? Women always do play fights is that, I'm fighting with you, but the reason I'm fighting with you is so that we can settle. Men don't know play fights. Men are literal beings. So this is when a woman says, I'm not talking to you. The man says, I'm not talking to you. We're going to see who win in this malice. He'll do his body like malice. Two weeks, he's still going... He doesn't understand that a woman is not interested in real fights. It's play fight. Play, in play fight, we're not really fighting. Man doesn't understand that. Man, men are literal beings. You're not talking to me. I'm not talking to you. We'll see who win. First to talk. And you see, it favors men because men ordinarily enjoy space. Men enjoy space. A man refreshes by space. A woman refreshes by companionship. So when a woman is stressed, how she rebuilds herself is companionship. When a man is stressed, how he rebuilds himself is space. Remember, Adam was alone in the garden for a long time, but the woman, from the day she landed, she had somebody to talk to. So women get refreshed by companionship. Men get refreshed by having space alone. So when a man is tired, he wants to be alone. He needs space. So what's the wisdom in this? When your wife is looking stressed and tired, she needs you. When your husband is looking stressed and tired, once in a while, give him space. Because women don't let their husband rest. Why are you sitting in that place? What are you thinking again? What's wrong? Why are you looking at your phone? You come and tell me, you don't talk to me, talk to me. She will now be increasing his stress, thinking she's helping him. Because for women, when a woman is sitting down quiet and stressed, what she really wants is for you to come and be asking her, what's wrong now? Why are you like this now? And she'll say nothing. He's asking her again, nothing. So why are you like this? I don't know. Why don't you know? I don't know why I don't know. <laughs> Women like you to disturb them like that. But when a man is sitting quietly alone, he really needs space. So my wife understands that a lot. If I'm quiet and reflective, sometimes she even tells the children, oh, if you leave daddy's room, she will pack all the children out. Oh, if you, out. She too, herself, will even leave. She understands I need space at that time. I don't, I don't tell her. It's, that's what I'm saying. That's why I'm doing the teaching. You need to read. The, the beauty about love is that when you read the person's need and meet it without them asking. That's the beauty of it. 
So I don't even have to tell her. She just notices that either I'm preparing for something, I'm thinking about something. She would jack all the children out. Even she herself would go and do something else with her life. And they would give me some time. If, if she has to be in the same room, she would just not talk to me. She would give me the space. And after a while, you see, because when a man is emotionally depleted, space is what makes his emotional energy rise. For women, it's the opposite. When a woman is emotionally depleted, companionship is what makes her emotional energy rise. This is why after sex, a man wants to sleep and roll on the other side. After sex, a woman wants to cuddle. Every time there's an emotional activity, the man is drained. If a man says, I love you, <laughs> that was a serious emotional activity. His emotional energy has reduced. He needs to go and sleep. <laughs> but if a woman says, I love you, she wants to now hug you and now laugh and play together. And he wears men out. So men need space when they're tired. My wife does it a lot. And me too, I notice her when she is stressed. I just come and sit with her. I just cuddle. Just hold her hand. Just hug. For no reason. See, men, don't worry about what you will say. Because what confuses me is that, okay, now that she's feeling down, what do I say? Nothing. Just hug. Hold hand. She will take the cue. She will guide you. Don't worry. Just hug. Say things like, how are you? See, when women are stressed, even if you don't know what to say, always give assurance, reassurance, and encouragement. You never go wrong. Things like, I love you, baby. I admire how you, what you do for this family and all the blessings you've brought into my life. See, men, don't wait for crisis. Be dropping these things on a daily. Even when everything looks okay. The mistake with men is that when things look okay, men become, uh, you know, careless. Ah, this, everything's going fine. Don't give no groove. No, when everything's okay, just be topping it up because it's going down. It's going down. So, ah, her shoulder is high. Is somebody get what I'm saying? So, Learn how to bless each other. Give your husband space sometimes. And you as a husband, give your wife companionship. Intentionally. And you'll find out that both of you will be happy. Were you blessed this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we pray? Can we pray? Father, we just thank you for every man and every woman that is here. We will continue to walk in understanding of what our partner needs. Lord, I pray for the men in the house today. They will be more in touch with their emotions. They will be more available emotionally and physically to their spouses in the name of Jesus. And I also pray for the women in the house today. They will understand how that a man needs space. They will understand how that men need solutions and not just affection. They will begin to speak more meaningfully into their husbands' lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a big hand. <laughs>